Hey guys, we're going to talk about how to find domain and range of all types of functions. Um, we're also going to talk about how to represent those in different manners. So we'll talk about roster form, we'll talk about mapping diagrams, we'll also talk about on graphs and in tables how to find uh, domain and range. So the biggest thing is that you got to remember that the set of inputs is the domain. And remember we talked about inputs, those are the x values. So the x values really represent the domain. And then the output values, which are, again, the y values, represent the range. So um, they have exercise one, it's considered the function that has inputs as the months of the year and outputs as the number of days in each month. And it's said use a non leap year uh, for the function. So each month, the domain would be the listing of those months. So January, February, March, and again, I'm just going to kind of abbreviate this list all the way up to December. And then the range is the days of the month. So for the range, it's going to be 28, 30, 31. So this is a function because each month only has one amount of days. Okay. Um, January, for example, has 31. February, 28. So that's how you would do a roster form. You just kind of list them out. And you want to list all of them. I kind of abbreviated it. Now, going on to exercise two, they want us to state the range for a certain amount of domain values. So they want us to do one, three, and five. So we have to apply the rule, which is two n plus one. So if I'm doing the first one, I'm going to put one in, and then I'm going to have two times one, which is two, plus one, which is three. So that'll be part of my range. And for the next one, if I got to put three in, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 will be 7. Then similar, 5, 2 times 5, 10, plus 1, 11. So those are my range values for that domain value. And they call this a mapping diagram because it just kind of shows a list inside the circles and gives you space to show work. Now, moving on to a graph example. If you look at exercise 3, they give us a graph, and it's on the grid below, and they want us to answer the questions based on this. So they want us to figure out the minimum and maximum x values. So minimum and maximum x values would be along the x-axis. So the graph starts right here at the point below it, and then it stops right here. So I want to figure out what x values those are. So the minimum would be negative 3. And then the maximum, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, maximum would be 6. They want me to do the same thing for B. So my graph gets as low as this point, and it gets as high as this point. So my minimum for my Y would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down, which is negative 5. And the max for the Y would be 1, 2, 3, 4, up, positive 4. So they want us to use what's called set dollar notation. And in the case, I mean, there's more than one way you could do this, but the domain would be um, from negative 3, we'll use a bracket because it's included, through 6. And the range will be from negative 5 to 4. And again, brackets on each one because those numbers are included. So let's move on to the a couple of the examples in the back. And exercise 4 is just, in this case, a multiple choice question. So they give us a function on the graph and they want us to figure out what the domain and range is. Now, the domain in this case 
as you can see, here's the graph, and we see that the arrows are going to the right and to the left, and they keep going. The arrow means just keeps going on and on forever. So that would mean that do domain is going to be any number left or right on the x-axis, which would mean that it would be, in this case, negative infinity to infinity. And then the range, well, we know the graph gets as low as here, which is negative 4, and then a whole graph is above it. So our answer is going to be 3, because this shows the range, and the range, or the domain, can go as far left or right as possible. <laughs> and then for the last one, we kind of have a special case here for the last one. They give us a a rational function, which just means it's a function with a fraction in it. They want us to evaluate 1 and 6 in the table, so you can clearly see the answers for 1 and 6. You can write those down on your paper. Uh, and it's asking, why does the calculator give us an error at x is 4? Well, at 4 it says error. And if you look up at the equation, if you were to plug in 4, where that x is, what's going to happen is you're going to get 0 in the denominator. And in that case, it's going to mean that the fraction is undefined. So, <clears throat> this would be the only case where that would happen, where you get 0 on the bottom, is when that number is the opposite of the number that you saw. So, it is possible in rational functions, kind of like the one we are just talking about here, you could get one value that wouldn't appear in the domain, but the actual domain would be everything, all real values except for negative 4. So the actual domain is all real numbers except negative 4. Okay. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're looking through some of these questions, because there can be functions where maybe one number isn't in the domain or range, um, or it could be a whole bunch of numbers. So you want to use your table and the graph to help you make that determination.